Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Danny Goodwin. And over there, we got John Lewandowski. Hey. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 202 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at phone 4 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. While you're online, please subscribe to us on YouTube. Thank you to all the people who subscribed during the trade deadline. I thought you guys were awesome. We got a couple Thank more you, posts. yes. That made, it, that made us feel pretty good about the work we put into that because we did put a lot of work into that. Um, including a uh, mid-show wardrobe change. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, we uh, we really do take pride in coming with stats and facts, not myths and right. rumors. We do. And speaking of stats and facts, uh, the Predators just before we get into this game tonight against the Hurricanes, uh, did sign a uh, goaltender Thomas Vamaka, but I believe it is Tomas Vamako. Vamaka. Tomas Vamaka. Uh, pronunciation wise. Now, he did play for the Lincoln Stars in the USHL in 2017 2018. Uh, he had a record of 24 and 19 with a 2.79 goals against average and a 0. 0.930 save percentage. He was 2 0 0 2 and 1 in the playoffs that year. In college, he flirted with. Uh, 500 on average. Uh, UConn's not really a good college for hockey. They don't have like a team that's going to, like, you know. Right. Not the Badgers or, or North Dakota or Notre Dame or anybody like that where they got a good team every year. They get lucky every once in a while. Uh, he was 7 and 7 in 2018, 2019. He was 15 and 15 in. Uh, 15, 15, and 3 in uh, 2019, 2020, and he was uh, 10, 11, and 2 in 2020, 2021. Um, with that being said, his goal against average ranges in college from 2.32 uh, to 3.13. And it stays in that area. Uh, international play for his his junior years is not really that good. He had a 4.29 in the U19 and a 5.0 in the U20. But international play, as far as juniors go, you really don't look at him too much when you see your team getting slacked by teams like Canada and Russia. Right. And so I'm not saying that it was his fault. So... Uh, what, we'll see what happens. You know, some guys can be horrible junior players and turn out to be stars. Right, they can. Um, so today the Nashville Predators took on uh, the Carolina Hurricanes. The, the Predators have not beat the Hurricanes yet this year. No, they haven't. I noticed that. Um, one of the reasons I would say for that is every time they play Carolina, it's coming off of either a, a break or um, a back-to-back, -back, or they just had a hard series. Like this right. last weekend, they played three and uh, three and four. So, I mean, they and, and with that being said, with the injuries and everything, the rest is minimal. Right, it is. So, uh, not that I'm making excuses. I'm just saying these are factors that could factors, why yeah. what we're about to talk about about happen um so uh shots were 29 to 20 in the in total uh shots per period this was something i was actually interested by because it shows something of of what i was talking about the fatigue factor um uh they had six shots in the first six shots in the second eight shots in the third the fatigue factor played in. Now, they will have a day off and, and try to figure it out. I wouldn't be surprised to see some guys go in and out of the lineup a little bit just to try and right. spark. Uh, Jano played well again tonight. Uh, he was minus one but had seven hits. You know, I mean, when you're playing like that, I mean, that minus one, okay, yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, good hard physical play. Yeah, I mean – you know, physical play, 
if you're not, if you can't beat them, beat them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tr- Sissons had three hits. Trennan had two. So that the the herd line um, definitely did their thing. Uh, you know, Harper and Davies and Yossi were all minuses. I really think that defensively, this team. Um, well, is in a bit of a jam with all the injuries, so yeah, uh, guys aren't getting the rest they they could and and stuff like that. So uh, let's get in the scoring. Scoring in the first was Warren Fogle, his ninth with an assist from uh, Jordan Stahl, his eighteenth, and you know Nita Ryder his twelfth. Um. Then in the second period, uh, Andre Svechnikov scored his 11th with an assist from Doug Hamilton, his, eight, his 28th, and uh, Jacob Slavin, his 11th. Uh, then in, also in the second, Vincent Trocek scored his 17th with an assist from uh, Pesci and uh, Nikas, Pesci's 18th, and Nikas is 22nd. Uh, Halla did score his fifth. Uh, in the third, uh, shorthanded with an assist from Sissons, his fifth, and Harper, his seventh. Um, and then you have uh, Sebastian Aho scoring his 18th with an assist from Chocek, his 19th, and Svechnikov, his 19th. Uh, goaltenders tonight were UC Saro stopping 25 of 29 with a .862, which is the first time in 16 games that he's gone that low. <coughs> Um, in net for Carolina was Peter Morazic. He stopped 19-20 with a .950 save percentage. Um, then we had uh, your referees were Kelly Sutherland and Dan, uh, Connor O'Donnell. Uh, linesman was Ryan Daisy and Brian Poncic. Uh, head coach for Nashville's John Hyde. Head coach for Carolina. Former Car- uh, Carolina Hurricanes t- uh, captain Rod Brindamore. Um, uh, scratches were uh, David Ferrets, Illy Tolvanen, Eric Branson, Dante Fabro. Uh, Tolvanen uh, should be back after the weekend as well as Fabro. Branson will be back by end of, by. They said he should be able to be active by Monday next week. Um, and Ferentz, he was a healthy scratch, uh, scratches for Carolina, uh, Brock McGinn out with an injury, James Reimer out with an injury, Jake Gardner out with an injury. So, uh, they play Carolina again, and then we go for a three and three against the Blackhawks. Those games against the Blackhawks will tell us whether or not we are in. Yeah. Um, because at this point, within the next few days, you're going to see teams start to clinch. Right, you are. Um, I believe at this point that no one has that they know of. But I believe John's checking and so am I. Yeah, I don't see any. No one clinched. Okay, so no one has clinched yet. Um, but it will be interesting to see uh, what happens going forward. Um, yeah, well, remaining games they play two at Carolina and two against Carolina in Nashville. I'm personally hoping they can squeak one out against Carolina in Carolina, just so for the fact of staying pace. Because. Right. Uh, even though the Blackhawks did lose to the Red Wings tonight, um, Dallas won, and they play um, Columbus and Detroit pretty much the rest of the season. So they got a pretty easy. Yeah. So their the end of their season should go a little easier than for us. However, for them, they got some bad news. Uh, ben Bishop and Radulov out for the rest of the out year. Out for the year, yeah. And that includes the playoffs. So if they made it, they're going with what they had last year going towards the cup. Right. Except for this time, they're without Radulov. 
So they're going to get dog walked if they do make it in the first round. Right. So, um, I mean, and I, I think that's our fear too, as far as the Preds are concerned. Um, if that's the case, that's the case. But at least we scrapped and clawed our way out of whatever hole we were in. And right. this team went down and found an identity and said, hey, we don't need a top pick. We have Tolvanen. We have Tomasino. We have Askarov coming. We got guys coming. We're good. We got Ferrets. We got this guy. We got Carrier emerging himself. Jano, Olivier. You know, these right. guys are showing that they're worth it. Uh, Granlin, uh, you can offload a guy like Duchesne or Johansson, whatever your pick may be. I'm probably sure it's at Duchesne now because Johansson's actually showed up with all the injuries. And, you know, we'll see what happens when Duchesne comes back. That's going to be the big playing factor of what happens at the end of the season. Right. If he doesn't come back and start proving it, then he's going to be gone. That's pretty much it. Uh, Poyle's position on this team is if you don't show up to play, you're gone. Right. And that's that's normally a coach's position, but to have a GM that has the same feeling, it's a good thing. Right. Um, Plus, they're hungry for their, their first cop. Yeah, and you always got to be hungry, no matter – and I say this, because if you look at it, I feel bad for the Sabres because the Sabres still haven't won theirs. And I think that when you really look at it, the Sabres should get to a point soon where they're going to be about as deadly as everybody else. When right. when they get their goaltending situation figured out, when they get their coaching and their and their scoring and defense and everything all put together, they will be in a good position and we'll see what happens. But yep. up until then, um, I will chat with you guys later. I will see you in a little bit, John. Take talk to y'all later. All right.